Sancho. We are on the Lord's team, the winning side. So raise your glass. And men, we have a heck of a show for you tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. Dave, we are outside. Actually, we're not even in the studio. We're in God's studio today. We're in God's studio, which is outside. Yes. <laughs> that, is, that is where we are. And we're joined by a special guest today. <laughs> yes, we are. Mr. Mike Miley. Woo! Hey, everybody. <laughs> so Mike Miley uh, has been with us before, but that was when Dave... Well, he hasn't been with us before. Been with, with us, you, me, and the listeners before. Yeah, that's true. Been with us. Us at the San Dave. And our, uh. I was doing important things last time. Yes, you were. Slightly, right. slightly important. I mean, I was really just standing there. <laughs> but it was really but important you, for me to be standing there. You, yes, because you had a, uh. You and your wife had a baby. Yeah. So, uh. Um, she was literally in labor. Well, you guys she, were she had to go into labor right when I got into town. Oh my God. And it was like, you we could have met her. This you know what? Like, like, you could have met her later. Pamela, <laughs> you did that on purpose. <laughs> uh, but this is going to be a special edition because we are outside. Like, Dave, you and I have said many times that the Catholic Mansion kind of stemmed also from uh, sitting outside by a campfire, men talking together, and saying at the very end of the night after recording, we should have recorded no, that. No, not after recording. Just after talking. Oh, I, actually, yeah. yes. I'm sorry. After after talking, we should have recorded that. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of guys had that that experience before, where they had some great conversation, and they said that we should have. Oh, that was so, so good that we should have recorded that. <laughs> and then it occurred to Adam and I, we have a radio station. <laughs> you know, we can totally do that. We <laughs> should just yeah, do we're that. gonna do it. Or like the last three hours of us sitting there eating tacos. By one. Yeah. One's tacos. Yes. <laughs> so we need to. Uh, In fact, Juan is here. He's just off. Uh, off mic. Off mic. Yeah. So we, we need to thank holding the light in place. <laughs> yeah. We need we need to thank Juan, uh, who is who's here tonight, holding the lights. You know, helping oh, with the he's videography. Assigned, he's been assigned about four or five tasks. Yeah. That so, he needs to do all at the same time. Juan, same time. Uh, so thank you, uh, Miley. For those who may not know who you are, who is Michael Miley? I am a man in California. <laughs> this is good. Uh, this is a good start. So far, you meet the prerequisites. Yes. Yes. Uh, in the age of gender ambiguity, I am a man. Good. Oh, good. California. Born of my mom. Uh, and I play drums for a band called Rival Sun. And I'm on tour. And we've been, ta I've been talking to you guys like, hey, when I come into town, you know, we should hang out. And uh, we have. We arranged a dinner. We arranged to tape this, and we kind of, we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants, I think, tonight. So um, without a doubt, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, so I'm on I'm on a day off in the middle of a, like a six week tour, and um, so it's great to be here. I love your show. I'm a huge fan. You guys have changed my life literally, and um, uh, yeah. So for those who don't know who. You know, maybe living under a rock and don't know who Rival Sons are. Give an example of like, you know, who are Rival Sons? What kind of music do you play? Give an a lot of listeners know who that is. Who Rival Sons are? Uh, it's a rock and roll band. We're, um, we we hail from Long Beach. We claim Long Beach. It's where we're from. It's where I met Jay, a singer, and um, this is phenomenal. Yeah, best rock vocalist I think on planet Earth. Sometimes I pretend to be him in the shower, and I think, like, I'm just as good, right? No. Um, <laughs> no. It, you know, we play, like, a, a very kind of niche in this day and age, a niche style of rock and roll, and um, uh, very blues-influenced, mm -hmm. um, yeah. R&B-influenced, um, gospel-influenced, which is what, uh, if you look at the... The annals of rock and roll, uh, starting with like, say the Beatles, say the British Invasion. You have the Beatles, Rolling Stones, The Who, Cream, Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix. Uh, they were all um, emulating or just ripping off um, blues, gospel, um, R&B, rhythm and blues, like the, the, the real stuff. Um, doing it on big drums and turning up the amps. And that's that's how you get uh, like. 
uh, rock and roll. Rock and roll is, is, is doing that music just turned up. And, uh, somewhere along the way, uh, when you take the blues uh, out of rock and roll, you lose the roll. So then you just have rock, you know? And then rock kind of turns into metal. And metal has no blues, you know? Um, so we're kind of trying to keep the, the, the old school roots yeah. of, of rock and roll in, in music. And yeah, so if you like Led Zeppelin, if you like Cream, uh, Rev Bridal Sons, you will like. Yeah, okay, so let me just you this. The first time I heard your music, for years, in, in college, I listened to classic rock almost exclusively. And I have, and I think everybody's been saying, how come people don't make music like this anymore? And the first time I heard Rival Sons, I said, someone is making music like this still. And I went around playing it for everybody. And, you know, it's like, this sound, like, this is, they're making this music right now. This band is. Yeah, this is in the 70s. Like, this yeah. is, this is a real live band right now. In this, like, today. Yeah. I yeah. was so excited. We, I mean, we kind of purposely formed the band around that, that ideology. Like, Scott and I, the guitar player, um, got together and we had that very conversation and, and just saying we're, something is was lacking in, in modern rock. I mean, at the time, um, you know, Jack White had the White Stripes and uh, the uh, um, oh, what I'm blanking on those guys, the Brothers album, the um, uh, uh, the two piece. What is it? The Black Keys, yeah. Black Keys. Black Keys. Wolf Mother. Um, we're doing. We're, we're doing this. this. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Peanut Gallery. Ben. That, that, that's my wife. Um, that we're doing this this kind of throwback or like yeah. allowing the blues to kind of come back into rock and roll. And so this is around the time we were forming uh, the beginnings of the band. We got Jay in 2009, and um, and so um, when Jay came in the band and kind of completed the, the circle of, of having a singer that has those roots mm -hmm. from folk, blues, Americana, um, R&B, gospel, um, you know, you, you listen to like these um, gospel tapes from the 30s and 40s, like, and it's eerie the way these people are singing, it's spiritual music, and then, and then you read, you know, an, uh, a book or an article and it's like, Jimmy Page, like, Played this album over and over again, you know. And, and uh, there's there's tons of information out there, like Eric Clapton getting into Robert Johnson and uh, just becoming obsessed with it and trying to emulate it. And, mm -hmm. and so we, we we draw from the same well as as the the, the classic rock bands that we're talking about. We try, we yeah. try to we try to do that. So if once again you don't know Rival Sons, go get on iTunes, check them out. Uh, your your music videos are also awesome on, on YouTube. I love watching those. I don't know who produces those, but pretty sweet. We've had different directors. We work with um, uh, a few different people, and um, we we just like it's it's art. We're making art. I agree. We, we like to be artistic. <laughs> yeah. To make a good video. I mean, there's a lot of great um, videos out there, and so to to compete with what's out there. Um, you know, you have, you have to work with the right people, you have to have a, the, the right treatment, you have to the right idea behind it. Okay, so if you are just now tuning in to the Catholic Man Show and you this is your first time tuning in, Dave, we do three things on the episode. Every every episode. Every episode. Where are they? The first thing we do is open, review, and enjoy a man of beverage, which we're gonna do right now. And I know we say this every time, but I'm so excited about this week's man beverage. Oh, yeah. The second thing we do is highlight a man here of some kind. This is something that every man should have and use in day-to-day -day life, especially the Catholic man. <laughs> I've got a glass right here. Pour it in there. Okay, sorry. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. And the third thing we do is have what some people call the man that's discussion for life. So if you're hearing the wind, sorry, but we're, we're outside. We're outside. Uh, okay, so the drink that we're, we're having tonight. Tell them. Tell them what I, it is. Dude, I'm so excited. It is a Glim Orangey 18 year. 18 years. Extremely rare. This this bottle of vodka, this bottle of scotch could vote if it was a citizen. Juan is like, hey, give me some. Give me some. I'm blaming him. You, you deserve some. Yeah, you, you deserve some. 
so yeah, it's Glen Morgy, extremely rare, 18 year. Um, I'm really excited about it. It's got that classic Glen Morangy smell. Every bottle of Glen Morangy kind of has a similar smell to it. Orange rind or something? Yeah, yeah it's very orange peel. Uh -huh. uh, that's just like the classic it's Glen Morangy. Yeah. It is an orange peel type of uh, a smell. So They know what they do and they do it well. So we're on the Lord's team? The winning side. So raise your glass. Cheers to Jesus, men. Cheers to Jesus. What? Okay. Oh right. my gosh, that is good. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> okay, so when we get back, we'll jump into the man here, but we're also going to talk a little bit more about this man we, beverage. We must. We must. Yeah. I'm Adam and Ann, sitting here with David Niles. We have Michael Miley, the drummer of Rival Sons, here with us. Juan is our producer this evening. My wife is our audience. The gallery. <laughs> we're on the Lord's team. The winning side. So raise, raise your, your glass. glass. We'll be right back. Show. I'm David Niles. Mm, yummy. Sitting here in God's studio with my friend Adam Minahan and my friend Mr. Michael Miley. Mm, mm. Now I know what uh, temperance was all about back in the day when they were legalizing uh, alcohol. But they will, what they really wanted to do is temper it so you wouldn't finish the bottle too soon. Because right. So because by making good. it illegal, you do you wouldn't just drink it all. <laughs> right. I had to go to Europe you to get that. Temperate, temperate, right? Temperance. Yes. <sighs> so this is the Catholic Man Show. Yes. And we are reminding you that wherever you go, there you are. And when you find it, there it'll be. <laughs> okay. So we just tried. A bottle of Glenmorangie that I've been saving for a while. Aged for 18 years in the barrel. So, you know, like, whiskey doesn't age in the bottle. Right. And if you it's have, not, well, like wine. Yeah, if like you have wine. a 12-year-old whiskey and it's been in the bottle for 50 years, it's still a 12-year-old whiskey. It only ages in the barrel. This one was aged 18 years in barrel. Wow. And, like, we're not saying extremely rare, like, that's what we're calling it. That's what's on, it the, bottle. on the bottle. It says, it says so you know it's true. extremely rare. <laughs> yeah, because... Anytime uh, someone who sells a product puts something on the label, it's know. true. It's true. Yeah. What are your thoughts, Miley? What are your thoughts? First thought, I mean, is smooth. Like my first sip, we we were talking, and I, like I almost didn't notice it, and that's not good because it wasn't good. It was sometimes you drink a bourbon or a scotch or a whiskey, and you're it's like whoa, yeah, you know, it kind of yeah. hits you like. I have a, a special thing I brought to as an addendum to this. Um, maybe we'll introduce it at some point. But that one will smack you in the face. This was so smooth <laughs> yes. that I didn't yeah, even no, notice it. In fact, between the breaks, or over the break, Adam, you said this is maybe the smoothest whiskey you've ever had. And I have to agree. And I hate saying that because it's like... I know. Superlatives. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there's, a, there's some great honey notes. There's some great yeah. uh, right. honey to it. It's very sweet. And the orange there's, peel the is orange peel present is, throughout. There is no pepper, corn. There's no like bite at the end. It is just smooth, straight through. I'll bet you anything my two-year-old daughter would like this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm kidding. Everybody is going to like this whiskey. It's, it, it is extremely smooth. If your infant is having trouble sleeping, you can slip a little in the formula. <laughs> that's you know, old school. That's it's, I know it's funny though. Like people really used to do that. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I actually have some friends who were Hungarian, and they were over. We had a dinner party, and uh, the grandma was there, had the baby in her arm, and literally like took the wine glass and poured it into this like nine-month-old's mouth. Oh, it helps him sleep. They're, you know, what are you supposed to like, say? Like, 
to an old grandmother. Yeah. yeah. You're feeding alcohol to my baby. Like, yeah. Please don't do that. But I'm socially, I'm not sure I'm allowed to do anything about it. Right. <laughs> All right. So okay. let's get to the man gear. Okay. Because this yeah. is one that Miley brought. Yeah. Mandrake, Glen Morangy, extremely rare, 18 year, amazing. We'll get to the man gear yeah, now. We'll, we'll talk about this for the rest of our lives. Yeah. Uh, Miley, you brought this book. I brought a book. And okay, hold on. Let's let, let, let's set the stage. Let, let, let's be honest. Let's yeah, be candid okay, here. I'd like to do that. Uh, Tell, paint a picture for us, Adam. We started this, like, Miley's been planned coming here for, I don't know, what, a month? Maybe? Oh, no, longer than that. Okay, yeah, yes. a couple months. And we were like, okay, we're so excited. We're ready to go. And you got here, and I said, Miley, I don't know what we're going to talk about yet. <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, and, we still and, and, we're going to talk about it. No, we still don't. Yeah, and, so this is the first episode where, and we like to do this on the episode, announce our first. Right. This is an open forum episode. Yes. We're just literally going to look and see, I am what not, see what happens. I am not Tim Sable. I am not Grant Moore. <laughs> just a disclaimer. Yes. So. I'm not either. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm sorry. So, uh, like, when we started, we were, we asked, I asked Dave, like, Dave, what should we do for the man here? And he said, I don't know. I said, well, let's, let's ask. Like, I actually suggested, well, why don't we record episode, or like, session three and four first, see what we talk about, and then, go and then back. we'll decide what a good man gear was based on our conversation. Right, so, but I said, no, 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 let's just let Miley decide. Well, and, and luckily he had some. Yeah, so. luckily he, he came prepared. Even yeah, more backstory, I, my, uh, my first episode I listened to you guys, um, your man gear was the scapular, and I was, I got super interested in that, and I think I was coming... I was coming within a few weeks, and when we when I taped with you the first time, right? Um, and uh, so I, I researched the scapular. Um, I came here. We went and bought one. Yes, um, at, at your the, yeah at your Catholic at bookstore. Catholic book, book gift store. Jim, yeah, Jim, Jim hooked us up. And I got I got six medals. Went on, so it was super uncomfortable. And it, it, <laughs> nice. But nice. It, it's like it's constantly smacking me, you know. And, um, what a great reminder! Yeah, yeah. I got um, with what's it called um, into the into the caramel light. Inducted, yeah. I yeah. got inducted. I did the, the whole procedure for that, and um, so because of you and because you guys and your your uh, man gear topic changed my life. So as as most of your episodes do, not all of them, not all not of them all changed them. my life. But <laughs> just kidding. Tip, typically, Dave, but do not. <laughs> so this, uh, I brought a book. That was funny, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was leaning for the book. Um, so so I, 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 I very uh, often hit up Patrick Coffin to um, Who's that guy? shout out to our buddy, our mutual friend. Um, we call him P Dog. <laughs> P Dog. He he turned me on to this book, and it's not it's not a Catholic book per se, but it is Catholic because it's universal. The the, the, the topic is universal. It's called Man's Search for Meaning by Victor Frankl, and um, he's a Holocaust survivor, and um, uh, the, the things he went through at Auschwitz, um, and his train ride to Auschwitz is, you know, um, marching miles a day in the snow with shoes that don't fit, that are leaking cold snow into your feet, like, he paints this picture, um, and, he, and he, he's, a, uh, he's a Viennese, or uh, Austrian, um, sociologist and he came up with um, the third Viennese school of psychotherapy. Uh, I think um, Freud is like the first school and somebody else is the second. He's the third and it's called logotherapy but it's basically the, 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 the science of meaning and that he found that the, the people who survived in the concentration camps were people who had something to live for, something they had hope and meaning and um, I think this is a very uh, universal Catholic principle and um, so I was very grateful to Patrick for recommending the book because it blew my mind. It's one of those you can read over and over again. And um, so that's just a little a synopsis of this book. And I brought it, um, uh, when Adam picked me up, I gave it to him as a gift, but I thought it would be a good uh, man here. I bought like 15 copies to give away, you know what I mean? So it's one of those books you want to share uh, with people. So. That's awesome. So, what is the thing that you got most? Like, what is the meaning? Like, if you had to grab one thing out of that, what was it? Well, the, 
to put it in a Catholic perspective, I would say hope. Hope is one of our um, uh, the three theological virtues we receive in baptism of faith, hope, and love. And hope is, hope is something that is ingrained in our uh, in Catholic spiritual life. So um, I think hope is so underrated. Like I, you know, we're in the year. We're in like a like an unofficial year of hope. Um, hope Francis announced in December, like the did it, did it? Yeah, but it's not like the year of mercy where it was like, like a big thing. You're bad, uh, I'm I'm bad because I don't know the, the exact how he did it, but he, he announced it at like at a mass in a homily, saying this next year will be a year of hope. Yeah. Hope, hope is something I that, hope he's right. Yeah. <laughs> hope is something that's so underrated because you hear all these things that you, you turn on the media, you hear nothing but negative things. It, it's so easy to fall into despair. But Christ over and over again said, "Be not afraid." I mean, "Be not afraid" was like what main theme? Like you had to pull out from the Gospels. Um, that was the thing that was. Yeah, I think it's the said. phrase that said more than any other phrase. Right. So I mean. Uh, being a hopeful man is being a Catholic man. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And yeah. if you want to know more about the virtue of hope, we actually did uh, a full episode, episode on that. Hope. Yeah. So it was like a long time ago. Yeah, maybe six months ago, seven months ago, eight months ago. Yeah, I know. It's somewhere in the, the range of months ago. Mm-hmm. There, and there's a sort of a, um, a, a Protestant problem with hope, because if you're once saved, like always saved, there's, there's no reason for hope. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Just like hope well, does not exist in heaven. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. yeah. I've talked to only love. Only love. Because you don't need faith, you don't need hope, only love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you're in front of the deep vision, there's no reason for he- there's no reason for faith. You're already there. Yeah, God there's no reason to hope. Mm-hmm. You're already there. Yeah. Yeah, but that's an interesting point that they do Yeah, what do they hope for if they are once saved, always saved? Mm-hmm. Work work out your salvation if you're in trouble. Yeah, I've always wondered what... Didn't, what, like, St. Paul say that or something? Did some, yeah. Somebody very smart. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty smart, I think. I think he was pretty smart. He, he at least had a lot of good things to say. He did have a lot of good things. Uh, but I've always wanted to ask a Protestant. Really, there's a lot of things I've wanted to sit down with a Protestant and be able to really ask them. How, what is it, you know, how do you guys grapple with these things? Not from a, I want to try to prove something to you. Really just understand... Because I think if I were to have a better understanding of the Protestant faith, I think I'd be able to have better conversations with them. You know what I mean? And that's something I really don't know. And there's, man, maybe 20 things, like major themes in the Bible. That, what do you guys do <laughs> yeah. about this? But anyway. Here we are. Here we are. Another break. Another break. We're going to come back and we'll be on our open forum topic. It's going to be awesome. We have no idea what we're going to talk about. Yeah. We're on the Lord's team, the winning side. So raise your glass. under the impression that everyone had heard that that was the word bird 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 i'm really sorry i did that um we are having a catholic mancho camp out at Creek Abbey. so awesome so awesome we have guys coming from the west coast coming from the east coast coming in we're gonna have miley is tentatively I have to get approval from the wife, my wife, which boss. is I, I, I very, highly recommend. Yeah, that. That highly a, recommend. That's, that is a good decision. But I really want to go. We're gonna have a, a, a camp out Octo- in October. If you don't know, October what is the 19th? October 19th through the 22nd, we're gonna have a camp out at Clear Creek Abbey. Um, we're gonna have a, a lot of fun. We're gonna have uh, Sam Guzman from the Catholic Gentleman is gonna be there. Our uh, fire is obviously going right now. You can hear that in the background. But we're gonna have a fire there. We're gonna have uh, Father Abbott be there. He's, he's gonna probably give a talk for us. 
um, going to be able to eat with the, uh, I mean, this is... With the monks. The Clare Creek Abbey is a contemplative Benedictine order. Okay. Yes. So they have two, there's two types of monks there. There's the choir monks and the lay brothers. The choir monks are typically priests. They basically pray all day long. They do work, of course, because that's the Benedictine order praying, or the Benedictine order praying work. But um, the lay brothers are there so that they can do, they actually spend more time working because somebody has to work keep, so, it, keep it going so yeah. that the yeah. choir monks yeah exactly so that they can pray right I mean that's like their vocation is prayer that is, is like spiritually imagine like a combination of a samurai ninja and the Hulk okay like what if what if the Hulk was trained as a ninja <laughs> that is spiritually what these guys are okay? yeah imagine that they spend and we're gonna hang out with them they spend all day punching Satan in the face that's what they do Sounds That's pretty their job. manly. No, it's super manly, dude. Like, it's super manly. So, I have to even use my manly voice. Man. And I think that we're probably only going to be able to have 40 to 50 guys there, max. Um, so, Sign up. Yeah, as soon as it's available on the website, we will be, we'll be shouting it. And also, go to our website, thecatholicmanshow.com, Check and it out. Um, cool. subscribe to our newsletter because we need people. I, I know that a lot of people here have been listening since, I don't know, episode two, three, four, five. You know, I've been as, listening for a long time. We need you guys, even though you've, you've told us you've been listening, we need you to subscribe to our newsletter because we're trying to continue doing cool things. And in order to do cool things, we have to have funds. And we have to tell people, like, look, people are actually listening to our show. Give us funds. That's how that works. The newsletter is free. The newsletter is free, but we just need you to, to go there and sign up so that way we can send you. We do a lot of cool things on the newsletter. And also, the newsletter is not it's, it's not like every other day. No, it's not spam. No. And, and let me just give a plug for you guys, like as a as a listener and a fan of you guys, like the the apostolate, your apostolate, is I think at the top of the list of importance in the, in this day and age, our culture, and the culture war that we have going on. I mean, there's a war is being waged Absolutely. right now yeah. on our faith. And and when you when you go into church and you, you read the statistics of, of, like, for every one man that goes to, like, uh, every, uh, mass, there's, like, five women or something. You know, there's yeah. crazy mm-hmm. statistics mm-hmm. on, on mm-hmm. women um, uh, being a church more than men. Sure. Yeah. And, and the, the, the man apostolate, the male, in the, in the age, like I said it earlier, of, I say, gender ambiguity. It's like, the, the Facebook has all these list of things that you can be, whatever you're feeling. It's and, like 72. And, and, but what? 72 genders you can register. That's not, I, know. I, don't, I don't understand that. I don't even know how they, how, how they do it. It's impressive that they even come up with that. Yeah. And, and there's like pronouns that are trying to be enacted. Um, for transgender, I mean, I, I'm I'm a very inclusive and, and, and loving, but there's there's even even if they approve these pronouns, we as men just need to the men who are men need to stay men and, and be strong, and we need to band together. And I think what you guys are doing is super important. So get on that mailing list, and it's just it, it'll be one email amongst all of the fodder that's in there. It'll be an actual real. Email. Yeah, because we have, we have real content. Like I don't, I think we sent out one every about two to three weeks, um, and it has real content. It has discounts for other Catholic companies that you can only get from our newsletter. Um, like, at, do you want Catholic cigars? Right. At a discount. A discount. At a discount. We're smoking a cigar right now. As we yeah, say. I was going to mention that we're actually we're outside. Yeah. And we're in fact, this is one of basically the main reason we're outside is that we can smoke cigars. Right. While we record this podcast. Uh, okay, Dave. So. And, and yeah. Yeah, it's a by far. Okay, so Dave, we've we've done the the drink, which is a Glenmore G, eighteen year, extremely rare. We've done the gear, which is a uh, man, man search, search for meaning, right? That uh, like Victor Frankel that Miley has presented. We don't know really what we're going to talk about as the topic, but we're just going to kind of freelance it. Like so many things, and you know, Riley, Miley, <laughs> Ry- Riley's my dog. That's why he's like that. Easy to, to, to mistake me for a dog. <laughs> <laughs> My mistake. Uh, what you're talking about with how many women are in the church, that's one of the things that I think is so ironic about the church being labeled as a, you know, a, 
you know, man dominant organization. I've always thought that was funny because it's being run by women. And thank, thank God, and I, I mean this literally, thank God for the women who are running the church right now. Because men, Absolutely. and only because men have not stepped up and fulfilled the role they're supposed to fulfill. And because the men have, have not fulfilled the role they're supposed to fulfill, women have had to step up for them. And because they've had to step up for them, they've had to become all of the lecturer, uh, uh, the people who are re- yeah, the extraordinary readers. extraordinary ministers the, of the Holy Communion. Ex- yeah. Exactly. I mean, they've had to do so much more than what they're really called to do. Yeah, and this is kind of controversial about this topic. But if you read the journal, or, or, you know, the allowance for the lay faithful after Vatican II mm-hmm. to be ministers of Holy Communion, it says that only extraordinary, extraordinary ministers. Um, that only when necessary should the lay faithful be allowed and it should be men and if no men are available then it says it's okay for women to be okay, so I'm gonna, that's just what it says I, so I'm, I'm going to play a double step okay. why men? because men represent the priesthood of the family right because when priests are up there they're, they're representing in persona Christi which means in the person of Christ and so men are, you know, Christ came as a male. Right. And so there's so much symboli- symbolism. Symbology. Symbology. That's the word I was going to say. <laughs> Symbolification. Yeah, let's just go ahead and go. I'm going to go with symbology. That's the new word. Uh, there's so much symbolism going on in the Mass. And not all of it is actual. Like, the priest, he is actually necessary. It's not actually necessary for the priest to distribute Okay, but it's very, very appropriate. Um, and so those symbols, while they might seem superfluous, are important to preserve because as a whole, it's like, okay, this one symbol, is that absolutely necessary? No. This one, is it? No. But when you look at the totality of the symbolism that they provide, without it, you know, the Mass loses a lot, the liturgy loses a lot of its teaching. The, the liturgy, the, the word liturgy means work. Work. The work of the people, kind of. Um, and without the, those symbols, those important symbols, the work loses a lot of the importance that it represents. You know what I mean? And so, and I, first of all, I, I, this needs to be said. I am not trying to disparage women who are extraordinary ministers. Thanks, we just, we just yeah, said, I, thank I, God for them. I'm not, right? I'm not saying anything. If, if you're a woman and you're doing that, I'm so glad because men aren't doing it. Right. You know, go to any mass, take a church, and just look at the genders of people who are going up. It's going to be about 70% women. Right. Um, and so men, you guys need to step up. You need to well, be that, the lectors. You that's need why to we started the Catholic Man Show. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I love, I love your show because I had, um, I, I, I'm a convert. Um, I uh, just celebrated my fourth Easter, so I'm very new. All right. And um, one, one of the my frustrations in the beginning, and this is like a confession, was um, going into a lot of, and I travel all over the world, so I, for a living, so I'm, I'm going to Mass in different languages, you know, all the time, yeah. and there's always a group of old ladies <laughs> sitting there praying before Mass, and doing a rosary, yeah. uh, there'll, there'll be a group of people doing a rosary 20 30 minutes before and I had a I had a realization a few months ago and I was like thank God for these ladies they are all a bunch of Saint Monica's praying for the church praying they're literally praying the world for their, praying. their 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 um, their fall away uh, relatives their, their children who are adults in the world who have fallen away they're praying for people who are sick they're praying their hearts out cheers, and I cheers to you women yes let's, let's cheers to the women yeah yeah yep. cheers. And, and and it's it's the the Catholic means universal we have to remember that and um, women have just just as important roles uh, as, as the men do absolutely and, and so but what we're talking about is they is there is a, a shortage a shortage of I don't I don't see a lot of old men there are 20, 30 minutes before Mass praying. No, no. um, so You're right. It's the same in, our, in my parish. I lead the rosary before Mass once a month, the fourth Sunday of the month. I'm the third. You're the third. Uh, 
So, and you're right. It's old women. There's a, cu- there's a couple old men, but it's predominantly yeah. without a doubt. So, raise your glass and no. Step up as a plate and hit a home run, men. <laughs> yeah. Swing for the fences. And be on the Lord's team. The winning side. So raise your glass. <laughs> yeah. much we all want to learn to just get mad skills on the harmonica. I think that should be man gear. When, when I was in college, like I started learning how to, I, I started learning how to play the guitar, right? And so obviously one of the first things you you start talking about, like Billy Joel is like kind of the harmonica guy, like yeah. you know that's one of the first like everybody knows Billy Joel. I can play piano, man. Yeah, yeah, and I can I can on the guitar. And so I was like, I want to do both, right? I want to I want to play the harmonica. Talk about Bob Dylan. Uh, well, Bob Dylan as Bob well. Dylan. Okay. Billy Joel. Bill, in, Billy Joel. In, in the song Piano Man, he plays. He plays both. He's yeah. got the neck yeah, yeah. brace. Yeah. The older. Thing. Well, so does Bob Dylan. But I mean, anyway. Sure. So I was like, I was dating Haley at the time, and I said, "Hey, Haley, listen, I want to play the harmonica." And like, I heard her like, kind of, "Okay," like, really straining, like, <laughs> "Okay," and I realized, I know that it is not fun to listen to somebody try to learn how to play the harmonica. Similar to, it's not fun to learn somebody, to listen to somebody play their bagpipes. Yeah. Those or are the, the violin. Or uh, the violin. How about any instrument? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, guitar, I'll, I'll guitar, bet the drums can... is, is not a, a peaceful one either. Not at all. Yeah. I, I my, mo- my mother is a saint. She let me play the drums at 7 p.m. every day. That was my cutoff. And, and I would Every wail. Day. I would wail. Wow. And <laughs> well, it's a good thing she did. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I have to tell you this. My, uh, so there's a park right behind my house. About once a month, there's some kid who goes and sets up an entire drum set in this field and just starts wailing. Just starts <laughs> I'm not jamming. Kidding. And he, he's just out there by I mean, himself. He's like, he's like, all by himself. Just out and here. And he, he, he's not like just, just playing. I mean, he is... Theatrically, like, like a whole, a whole drum set. I, I'll bet you he has a, a YouTube page that has like like nine million hit hits on it. I don't know, <laughs> but it, I've watched him. It takes him about twenty minutes to set it up and to yeah. take it down because he's you know hauling cymbals back and forth. It's a couple oh. hundred yards from where he does it back to his car. Anyway, I whenever he's out there, I love it. I just go outside and I can I can see him from my back porch. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. Anyway, so we were just having a conversation before the break mm-hmm. about areas where men are you know, deficient in service. And service, I think, is a defining characteristic of what it means to be a man. Without a doubt. I'm, like, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. I mean, men are made to serve. Mm-hmm. Um, we're made to, so are women. Women are made to serve, too. But in women, a different way. Women, they just, they get it. Yeah. You know, there's never going to be a it's, crisis it's, of, of womanhood. Yeah. There's never going to be a crisis of of, of the feminine. Um, there will be in small pockets. You know, the feminist movement is obviously a crisis of the feminine. But it's really a reaction to a deficiency in the masculine. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, so it's still stemmed with, with men. Yeah. Women so intuitively and innately understand their vocation to serve as women. But it, it's men... Who have to really make the hard choices, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm not saying that it's women. It's difficult to. I mean, service is always hard. Um, that's why it's service, because right. you, it, it involves giving of yourself. Um, you know, it's not playing PlayStation. That's not service. 
Well, part of, part of the curse was uh, of, of original sin uh, was that men were to toil right. and, and work and sweat of their brow, brow would put food on the table. Yeah. That's our service. It's, it's serving, serving our family, keeping them alive and the, on the most base human level. Mm -hmm. you know? And like I have this like, you know, thing with Ephesians 5, we've talked about this day, like, you know, with uh, men serving their, you know, serving their wives as Christ served the church. Yeah. Dave, how did Christ serve the church? He died. He died. He literally laid his life down for, yeah. for, for the church. And so if you want a good example, look to Christ. Look at, look at Jesus Christ. He laid down his life for the church. That's how men are supposed to lay down his, their lives for their wives. That's what it. That's what it says. Yeah. Women. Uh, it says men lay down your lives as Christ laid down his life for the church. Yeah. So I was actually thinking kind of about this today. Okay. And I was thinking about you know us men who we say you know we love we have these people in our lives that we love you know our wives, our children, our family, our friends. Mm -hmm. And Christ says there is no greater love than to lay your to lay your life down for a friend mm -hmm. for another. Okay, and so the question is, you know, I've asked myself this before. Would I be willing to die? But would I be willing to die for my kids? Absolutely. Right. Okay, my wife? Absolutely. My friends? You know, and that, I, I hope so. It's a tougher decision because in that moment, I'm having to weigh, am I willing to be absent from, from my children mm -hmm. for, for this, you know, for this person? Am I willing to die for that? So the question is, how do you know if you really love someone? Well, do you die for them? Do, so, you, do you fast for them on I'm a regular basis? Die. Do you suffer in silence for them? And do you do it with joy? Do you, are you happy to endure this? Or do you, do you complain about it? Do you whine about it later? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's how you know if you really love someone. Do you die for them? That's how you know if you would die for them. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're, I totally we're called to... That, and I realized that this whole dying for someone, it's not a, oh, that w hopefully that won't ever happen, have to happen. It's something that we're called to every day. We have dying to self. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And becoming Christ. You know, Paul says that. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, like, that, I think, Dave, you have Saint to... Paul. Saint Paul. Saint Paul. Yes. I'm a new <laughs> Catholic. <laughs> Sorry. But, but, Dave, I think, I, I think you're totally correct. I think you have to, like, come into the mindset of, at any point in time, I'm willing to lay down my life for anybody, and you can't you can't make any provisions. You can't say, oh, except for this, except for this, except for that, and you can't say, oh, well, what about you know my children? What about this? Like, you have to come into the mind mind frame of, I'm willing to lay down my life. It, if you know, and this is radical, right? I mean, yeah. uh, at least right now, um, in, in this world, we don't have to. Luckily, we don't have to worry about like, oh, I have to lay down my life. Like, you know, somebody's gonna cut off my head right now. Uh -huh. But if that came about, you have to be in the mindset beforehand of saying, regardless of what what happens, I'm doing it. Yeah, you almost have to make the decision right now right. that you're prepared to do it. You know, it's a, it's a decision. And one time, I was thinking about this on my way home, and then I almost crashed into the car ahead of me, and I real and I had this panic, like, what? And it made it. This moment made this conversation I was having in my head very real. Mm -hmm. And I realized I was instantly worried that, no, I can't die. I have to take care of my kids. I have to take care of my wife. You know, like, mm -hmm. who's going to do that? And then the next moment I realized, Dave, you are being so prideful. Mm -hmm. Do you really think, do I really think it's me that takes care of them? These, right. my children are God's children before they're my children. And do I really think that it's me like it's because of my strength and my power that I'm able to provide for them. That's why I think it's no, so important. It's because of it's God is providing for them through me. And I realize, do I think that God doesn't love them enough that he that he's not strong enough to take care of them if I'm gone? Right. Like I am such a weak, pathetic instrument. <laughs> and that's why I think he, it's so important. You know to, what I mean? To focus at it at the beginning, beforehand, because it's the same thing with any kind of like business decision. Right, you know, going into a business decision, like whatever happens, I'm gonna go, like, I'm gonna go here. You know, here's the goal. Here's the goal. And if even somebody comes down and tries to negotiate down, like I have a, a set limit, like I'm not going below this. And so I think it's really important as a Christian, as a Christian man, 
you have to know whatever it is I'm not going below this and what what the radical thing that Jesus is calling us to is that the below this is your life you know so the below this is anything that you're not willing to give your life for so that, that, that that's what it is and so you have to come into it just like any kind of business decision any kind of friendship that I know here's where I'm going to go here's my lowest and the lowest should be your life Right now, of course, prudence has to come in to, you know, like, you shouldn't just be throwing your life away uh, for... Well, I don't think that's an issue. You know, no, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But, but it has been in the past. I mean, there was, in the early church, there was a group of people who started glorifying martyrdom. And they went out intentionally seeking it. And that's and the church has condemned that. I mean, yeah. But I don't think men of today are... I don't think that's are, an issue. I, you know, it's not something I think we have to worry about either. No. But even, like, the small things... Uh, we should we should clarify like the small things are a sort of a death, you know, ser- yes. serving Without another. Without a doubt. Um, ser- ser- like waking up when the when the baby needs formula at four in the morning, um, you know, or just any kind of service, any kind of self mortification, any kind of offering up, um, dis- you know, dis- any kind of discomfort we have, and enduring that is 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 it also a death. Dude, Miley, the, the, the toughest one for me. It's like what Jose Maria Escriba says, like the holy, the holy minute. Same. same, same. Yes. I'm sorry. The heroic the minute. Whole, the holy minute. The heroic minute. Waking yeah. up. Heroic. The heroic the hero- minute. Heroic yeah. minute. Yeah. Heroic minute. That is so yeah. tough for me, at least. Mm-hmm. It's tough for everybody, man. Yeah. Um, you know, it's waking up as soon as you do. Get out of bed. It's a total act of the will. Yeah. Get out of bed. Get on your knees. Kiss the floor. Yes. <laughs> is one thing Saint Jose Maria prescribed. Mm-hmm. For us, I need a vacuum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're gonna be kissing the floor. Wow! Oh, oh man! Okay, There's so music. so if you're just not listening, become a council man member because we're gonna be doing a little bit more extra with Michael Miley, the drummer of Rival Sons. I'm Adam Mann, sitting here with David Niles, Glenn Moore, the 18-year extremely rare is our man beverage. Go check out the book Man's Search for Meaning by Victor. Yes. Sprinkle. Love you guys. I love all you. Well, the worst team. The winning side. So raise your glass. Cheers to Jesus.